leader, Andrew Ronsley of The Observer. This is his take of the political week. All political eras, however long and successful, must come to an end. His did, hers did, and so did his. We didn't get a people's budget from Alistair Darling this week. We had a funeral. The Chancellor was the undertaker as the last rites were read over new Labour. It is over. It is done. It is buried. The political project founded by Tony Blair, Gordon Brown and Peter Mandelson some 15 years ago. My Lord Mandelson denies it. He's a rather lonely voice, insisting that he can still feel the pulse of new Labour. But it sounds to me like he's whistling in the graveyard. So what will the new era look like? Well, if we're unlucky as a country, Britain will return to the sad old, bad old days of the 1970s, when the burden of debt and levels of tax meant that governments could only deliver miserable improvements to standards of living and public services, with the result that Prime Ministers were chucked out after just one term in office. Whatever it looks like, the next period in our political history is going to be starkly different to the new Labour era. The founding fathers of new Labour had three core beliefs. The first was that it was politically suicidal to increase income tax. They bent or broke other promises over the past 10 years, but that one they stuck to religiously until now. Of course, the vast majority of people don't earn anything like enough to be bitten by the new 50p rate. Gordon Brown is gambling that it may even be popular with less affluent voters who are livid with the bankers and may be pleased to see high earners being asked to take more of the pain of the recession. Politically, it's the symbolism that matters. Labour is back to where it was before Blair. It is again the party that puts up income tax. The second of New Labour's core beliefs was that careful management of the economy would avoid the wild swings from boom to bust of the Tory years and the financial calamities that had swamped Labour governments in the past. For a long time, they succeeded and helped them to win three elections in a row. They appeared to have fulfilled Harold Wilson's ambition of making Labour the natural party of government. The third core assumption of New Labour was that a growing economy would spare them and the country from having to confront the harsh choices that have faced previous governments. Continuous prosperity meant that they would be able to spend on the nice things, more cash for the NHS, for education, for the poor. Those years of easy money are over. Whoever wins the next election, there will be the most severe squeeze on public spending since this lady was in Downing Street three decades ago. David Cameron says he'd cut spending even more steeply than Labour, though he's yet to say how and where. If he's interested in getting a solid mandate from the voters, the Tory leader will have to be honest with them about just how brutal things could be if he becomes Prime Minister next year. David Cameron once described himself as the heir to Blair. Now, it's much more likely that he'll have to impersonate her. It's not just the last rites for new Labour. New Tories look dead and buried too. That was Andrew Ronsley at the National Portrait Gallery in London. We're joined by the MPs for Zog East and Zog West. Greg Dight and Janet Street Porter. Greg, simple question first. Is New Labour dead? Uh, some of it. Some of it's dead. Something that's happened... I mean, I think something that started with Margaret Thatcher 30 years ago is actually, you know, we embraced American capitalism. And I do think that's come to an end. And New Labour was part of embracing that. Yeah, well, yes. New Labour just followed on. Diane, is it dead? I think Greg is right. We've finally, you know 
turning the page on the, on the Thatcher and her legacy. But, you know, if New Labour meant repositioning the party to the right, we're still more or less there. So is it dead or not? Or no, on life support? Not if it means the right, the right would shift. No, the right would shift stays. It's here. Michael, is New Labour dead? Yeah, I think the 50p is extremely symbolic. And also the... But you can get overdo that. But also the, the degree of intervention by government in the state... And, of course, it's also part of a broad international picture. I mean, the, the situation is transformed now. The percentages of GDP that are going to be consumed by governments around the globe are hugely different from what they've been in the last 25 years. So it's dead? Yes. Janet? I think what this budget has shown is that we've had it explained and explained in all the newspapers, and I think most people's reaction uh, today is their relationship with the political process is dead. So it doesn't matter that at the end of that film, Andrew says it's the end of new Tories. I think that the public are now so disenchanted with politicians. I mean, when I read this morning that it's going to take 30 years to pay off this debt, mm. I think, well, does it matter who I vote for? And that's a bigger problem because I think that has been a gradual process. I mean, a year ago, Gordon Brown said... This is going to be a new era. It's the end of spin. No celebrities. What you see is what you get. And here we are a year on from that. We think everything you told us a year ago has turned out to be patently untrue. Does that mean, Greg, that Labour's dead, not just new Labour? Yeah, I, I think that's much more likely that actually what we're living through is the dying throes of a particular political system. And... You know, the Labour Party came out of the trade unions. The trade unions are dead, virtually. Mm. Um, and that's why I don't think he's right about you it's know, going back to old Labour, because it's not. This is the strange death of Labour England. Do you remember that, that very famous book? Yeah, I do. The I strange do. death of Labour yes, England. So You're I, saying this is an equivalent I, I, era. I, think, I, mean, I don't think the government has, this government has a chance of winning the next election. And I think that after that, when Labour tries to re-examine what it is now... I think they're in terrible trouble. I think that you, it, it is premature to say the Labour Party is dead. We had this in 97. Oh, the Tories are dead, the Tories are dead. Well, there's the Jeffrey Tories Wheatcroft are a great wrote a national, book called yeah. The Strange Death of Tory England only five or six years ago. Yeah, that didn't the, turn out to be very back. accurate. Sorry, when we say a party is dead... we, we can't we, write we, off a great national we, party. We only mean it's dead for a, for a while. I mean, you know... The, oh. <laughs> no, I think oh. we do. Fair enough. No, yeah. I thought if you were dead, you but were dead. But do you really think... No, no, not in politics. No, I mean, the Tories were 